everyone, and welcome to Gardening and Canning in the City. Today we're going to do something that's one of my family favorites. Since it is peach season, we are making peach salsa. This recipe comes from the fall complete book of home preserving. If you are new to canning, this is a great canning book. Let me tell you, I've been canning for well over 40 years, and the recipes in here are really, really good, and I use a lot of them. This is on page... 215 and we are going to make a double recipe since it is one of my family favorites. Come along with me. So the ingredients for this recipe, don't forget I'm using a double recipe, is one cup of white vinegar which I have mixed in with my chopped peaches. I have 12 cups of chopped and pitted, pitted peaches. To peel a peach make sure you dunk it in boiling water for a few minutes and that will help you get the peels off. Along with that, we have two and a quarter cups of, or excuse me, two and a half cups of red onion, eight jalapenos finely chopped, two red bell peppers seeded and chopped, one cup of uh, loosely packed finely chopped cilantro, four tablespoons of honey, two cloves of garlic, chopped, three teaspoons of cumin, and one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You take all the ingredients and you throw it in the pot and then we'll get started. So I've got all the ingredients in the pot. It smells incredible. This is a really great sweet but spicy salsa. Um, it's definitely one of my friend's favorites. My daughter actually put in a tree just to be able to make this peach salsa. It is so good. So we're going to bring this up to a boil over medium high heat, stirring constantly, and then we re uh, reduce the heat and boil gently for about five minutes. And then we remove from heat and We'll get it in the jars. Um, I have my jars all ready. My lids are all on the stove. They're all nice and hot and they're ready to go. Make sure you start doing that first because you want to make sure they're ready to go because once this is ready to be canned up, it goes really, really quick. Um, this is a really good recipe to get a lot of your friends together and do the chopping because there is a lot of chopping involved. And you can also do this the day before. Uh, everything but the peaches and then do the pe peaches a day of because I mean it, it took probably you know an hour hour and a half to do all the chopping for this double recipe but this is actually my second double recipe I have four families I feed so um, we'll be lucky if we even get this peach salsa to last us to the end of summer we go through it so fast so let's get started can't wait for it to start boiling up these peaches are really, really sweet. They're nice and firm, but they're sweet. Uh, we use a high bricks method, which was developed by a April Asher. Uh, if you're interested in learning about that, I can put the link in the description box. Um, she has a blog and she explains how to do this, but they're really, really sweet and uh, they're incredible. So um, go check her out. Oh, we're just starting to get up to a boil here. I'm going to go a couple more minutes so it's nice and boiling really good. Um, when you're canning, you want to make sure that you completely sterilize your countertops and you're ready to go. My countertops were cleaned with bleach. You want to be really clean when it comes to canning. You don't want any bacteria getting into your food. It's very important. So have all your stuff all prepped and ready to go. And then my jars are right here, of course in the lids. I don't boil my rings. I usually just pop the rings on. They're, they're not in contact with the food. So we're up to a boil. So I'm going to go ahead and start the timer for five minutes. And we're going to boil this for five minutes and then we're going to put it in the jars and then we're going to water bath can it for 15 minutes. I'll bring you back as soon as the five minutes are up. 
Okay, so our five minutes are up. We're going to start canning it up and putting it in the canner. I'm actually putting this in pint sized jars because we go through a little bigger jar. So I'm probably going to water bath can it a little bit longer. Um, instead of 15 minutes, I think I'll do like 25 just to be safe. But yeah, you're going to do this. I uh, put this in here with a half inch headspace. Um, if you're new to canning, I would suggest that you use the little debubbler tool to make sure your headspace is correct. But I've been doing this for years, so I pretty much know where it's at. So put a bit more in there. I like to put my hot jars on a plate because I have granite countertops and I do not want them to crack from the heat. So. Oops. So we just empty our lifter and empty it out. I always have one in back, one in front, so I have a place to put my funnel. Inch or one inch, we don't want to do a one inch on a half inch. So we'll do this before. Mm, a little too much. If you look on there, you can see where the ring is. That is your one inch. This one here is your half inch. That one there is for jams and jellies. That's your eighth of an inch. I'm not sure. Just use the tool and you'll know that that's pretty much where it's at. So, get a lid. Just sticking together. all jarred up and ready to go in the processor and then I'll bring it back. All right so we've got them all jarred up. We've got what, eight jars, eight pints and there's probably still enough for maybe one or two more pints in the pot. That's for a double recipe. So I'm going to put the lid on and bring it up to a boil. This is a Victorio canner. I absolutely love it. Out of all the canners I've had my whole life, this is my favorite. It's even got the little altitude thing on top, so it know, lets you know when you're at the right boiling temperature. So that makes it a, pretty much a no-brainer. But if you don't have a water bath canner, you can always just use a big pot as long as you are one to two inches over the jars and you put a little rack underneath the jars so that they're not touching the bottom of the pan. Uh, it'll work just fine. You do not need to go out and buy an expensive water bath canner if you're, you know, pressure canning. That's something different. But for a water bath canner, any pan, any pan will work as long as the jars not, don't touch the bottom and you're one to two inches above the top of the jars. All right. So I'm gonna let these go. It says in there for half pints to do 15 minutes. I'm going to do 25 because these are pints, so I need to go a little bit longer. So let's get started and I'll let you know when they're coming out of the canner. Bye. Well, our time is up. As you can see, it is in the green area. As soon as it gets up there, that's when you start your time. So now that my time is up, I just turn it off. 
and I like to let it sit for at least five minutes because you don't want anything coming out of the jars. So I'll just kind of tilt the lid like that and let it kind of cool down a little bit. If you take them out too soon, you'll get siphoning and everything inside the jars will start to be siphoned out because it comes down too low. And as you bring the jars out, you want to make sure that there's no cold air. In the summertime, you'll have your air conditioners or fans or whatever thing on. You want to make sure you turn any fans off. You don't want any cold drafts hitting your hot jars. They will break and you will have one very big mess. So I'm going to let them sit for about five minutes and then slowly take them out depending on how hot they are. And then I got my towel all ready to go. I double layer it because I do have the granite countertops and I don't want to crack my countertops. So I put it on there and then let them cool completely for 24 hours uh, before you remove the rings. And then you label them, clean them up, and take off your ring. And then they'll be delivered to whoever's house is next. we got four families, so one's got one. Uh, next on the list gets this case. All right. Our jars have cooled. They're still pretty hot in here, so when you take them out, you got to be real careful. But isn't that pretty? Look at that. Makes a beautiful jar of salsa, and it tastes amazing. This is really good on uh, fish tacos, chips, you name it. It is really, really good. My favorite is the fish tacos, and then I like it with a little cabbage. Out. We got uh, eight jars, plus I got one extra. I'm going to be using that for dinner tonight. Yum. So I didn't bother sealing that one. That was just an extra jar. So no use in running it just for one jar. You want to take these out. Make sure that there is no fan on or no cold drafts, air conditioners, or anything blowing on them because they're really hot. You want them at least one inch apart. So they can cool. You let them sit for 24 hours. Check and make sure that the lids have all popped down. And if they don't, if you have a jar that doesn't seal, no big deal. Just uh, put it in the fridge. You can reprocess it later if you want to try it again. But most of the time, it just we just eat it. I mean, it's not that big a deal. There you go. There you go. Well, I hope you liked this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. Um, I hope to upload a lot more videos. I do a lot of canning. I can almost every weekend. I've um, been canning for years and years and years. Um, oh, plink. <laughs> that great sound. Plink, plink, plink. Hope you like that. So, um, please uh, subscribe to my channel and do the bell icon and you get notifications when I upload more videos. I will be doing lots over the summer because the orchard is starting to produce a whole lot of fruit. Um, right now we have just flats and flats and flats of peaches. So um, we'll start out with a lot of peach recipes and uh, jams. <laughs> That's there all stinking. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please give it a try. Um, thank you. Bye-bye.